Okay, so this this course basically what I teach is a change in perspective. Normally, everybody views things from the point of view of their ego, right? So, and they try to tell their ego off because the ego is being a bad boy and saying bad things to their ears. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're so stupid. Oh, don't do that. You're not going to be able to do that. And they think that's ego. And they think that the part of them that is thinking that that is ego is not ego. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it is. Okay. Because if it's judgmental, it's ego. Right. Okay. <laughs> so if you think you're doing something wrong, that's your ego talking. Okay. If you think you're doing something right, that's your ego talking. So any judgment, good any or bad. Any judgment, good or bad, is ego. Okay. Okay? So, if what's not ego is yourself, your higher self, when yeah. you're connected to yourself, higher self. When you're connected to your higher self, that's when you're conscious. And that's when you're present. Okay? So that aspect of you, which is the more true you, doesn't judge. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> so it's not, ego is not only judging yourself, but judging others too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the mind that spins around in circles going, oh, look at the right, this is wrong, this is right, this is this, this is that. Wow. So... What we're, what we're trying to learn is not to force ourselves to, to be more spiritual, force ourselves to be more conscious, force ourselves to be more aware. Um, it's not a question of being happy even. It's, it's just a question of being. Yeah. And we all know what that is. Yeah. And it's very simple. So I guess it all links into being mindful. Because if you're really, truly in the moment, you're not judging the moment, you're in the moment. Exactly. Okay. But if you tell somebody to be mindful, yeah. then they're telling themselves, okay, I'm doing things wrong, I have to be mindful, don't do that, do this. Right, They're yeah. judging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't make the ego connect. With, from the ego, you can't connect to your body, to yourself, and be present. Okay. Because the ego is the disconnection. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. At the same time, when people go, yeah, then what's ego? It's like some kind of devil that's sitting on your shoulder or some weird presence. or No. Ego is when your mind gets separated from your sensations and your body. Wow. That's a good description. Yeah. Okay. It's when it starts thinking on its own. Yeah. What's not ego? Creative thinking is not ego. Being in awe in discovery is not ego. Okay. But the mind that goes around in circles judging and thinking what do I have to do and not knowing what to do and I have to choose or what if, what if, what if, that is ego. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. Because people want to kill the ego. Yeah. But I think that's cruel. Because the ego is actually a reflection of your inner baby. So we need an element of it, but not taking over, not ruling it. It's just an inner baby cr screaming. Yeah. We have to pay attention to it. Yeah. Not kill it. Yeah. yeah. People want to kill it. People want to, you know, dump it into the garbage or whatever. You can't do that. No. And whoever wants to do that is ego anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so you're treating, we're treating ourselves very poorly because of this. And we're, we're, we're punishing our inner baby, not our inner child. Okay. Inner baby. In a baby, okay. Yeah, because the inner child, so children start thinking, especially from the age of four onwards. Sometimes from the age of two, you get some stuff, but from the age of four to seven is when you create all your mental patterns. Four to seven? Four to seven. Interesting, okay. okay. That's when you start rationalizing. Yeah. So from two to four, you're not really thinking, at what we call thinking, you register. I have memories from when I was that age, so I know how I thought. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, it's more a, a thought process of realization. When I was like two years old, I was like, okay, I have a feeling this is possible or understanding, oh, what's this? Oh, I want to understand it. I know I can understand it, but my mind can't, can't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I have to repeat it. And then maybe if I see it a whole bunch of times, it'll go in. 
Yeah, yeah. That's how I felt when I was a kid. So like a discovery. Type. Yes. Okay. It's discovery. It's like curiosity. It's like feeling there's information there and wanting to connect with it and grasp it. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. So it's not really rationalizing. That's four to seven. Okay. 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 So when people talk about working with your inner child, they're talking about four to seven. Okay. So what happens to that inner child? That inner child is already making up movies. It's already interpreting life. Yeah. So if you do an inner child work, what you're going to do is you're going to feel the stories. Yeah. You're going to feed into it. Anything you feed into, anything you put your attention into, what happens? It gets bigger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not going to solve the problem, you're just going to create more problems. Yeah. Okay. I started doing my, my inner work when I was eight on my wow. own. Wow. Wow. I'm 53. Wow. Okay, with a lot of years. So you were only a year out of being in, you know, in your inner child years before you started. Oh my goodness. Wow. Because I was suffering all the time. Because I was so sensitive to my family's history and I didn't know. And they didn't know. Yeah. So they just pushed me away. And I had bad relationships everywhere. Yeah. Because I just didn't know how to relate with people because I was feeling so much. Yeah. So I started looking inside myself and saying, okay, what it is? What is it that I did wrong? You did that from eight. Yeah. That's really remarkable. Wow. That hurts. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, and on my own. Yeah. Without professional help, without parents to help me, without anybody to help me. So, for years, I would just go into the problem. What is it that I did wrong? What is it that I did wrong? Obviously, at the beginning, the approach wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Obviously. But then after many, many years passed by, I started realizing that the more I looked into the past looking for what I did wrong, what was the problem, the more problems I found. Yeah. And then suddenly, what start, since I had solved uh, all the problems in this life, images of past lives started coming up. Yeah. And then I started discovering my ancestors' lives. And so in the long run, I discovered that not only that past lives, my ancestors, and my own life all had the same patterns. Oh, all of them were linked? Same. Yes, of course. Wow. They aren't always linked. Yeah, yeah. But the more I looked at it that way, the more I feel it. So it was basically stuck repeating the same patterns all the time. Yeah. Because I wasn't feeding anything different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I started changing the perspective. Okay, so what I teach also is that basically we are repeating timelines based on cellular memories. Okay. Those memories from past lives or ancestors, which is the same thing. Same. It's just, see, I, I have experienced past lives, but I wouldn't vow that that is true. Yeah. What I do vow is truth is that I have experienced in my body information that I carry in my body. Okay. And that that resonates with stories. Yeah. That could make sense as my ancestors' stories or my past lives. But whichever it is, it's just stories that belong to humanity. Yeah. They're not even mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just carry them. Yeah. And I can vouch for that. Those are cellular memories. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I teach how to deal with the cellular memories, how to release them how to understand them, how they condition our life experience, and how we can just, re how we repeat and repeat the same patterns over again until it's time to let go. Yeah. So the idea is the sooner we let go, the easier it is. Yeah. Because the quicker the change is. Yeah, yeah. The more we take, and to let go you have to experience the, 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 the emotion yeah. that the cellular memory brings. Yeah. If, if you don't experience it, if you just rationalize it and you start judging it, you're a bad, you're, yes, no, it's your fault, my fault, then it's not serving its purpose. No. And life's saying, okay, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And it gets harder each time. Yeah. So at the beginning, it's very light and you have like maybe worries and psychological issues, like, oh, maybe you're stressed, you're depressed, but then it gets, affects your relationship, it affects your job, it affects your household, it affects your health, it affects your... Um, I don't know, you have an accident or whatever, and so you have a really mm, bad disease. That's when you've just not integrated the experience for so long, for yeah. years. 
give me at least 10 years of rejecting an experience for that to turn into cancer, for example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the more sensitive we become and the more we experience in our body things, and today with movies and all this stuff, it's very easy to experience things, then the sooner we change timeline. Yeah. And the sooner we change timeline and we experiment another timeline, we experience another set of patterns. So the idea, what I teach is how to detect, how to use your feelings to detect when you're about to change the timeline, when you have to let go, when you... Oh, interesting. So is, do you think being sensitive is a bad thing or a good thing? Or is that judging again? Is that... Exactly. Doing it again? <laughs> <laughs> I just realised, I thought, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very good. Oh, <laughs> you're very fast. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. It, it is. It just is. And I think it's pretty cool now. Yeah. Um, it has its mm, issues, like, okay, you have to learn how to use it because it's not always as easy, especially when you... Um, uh, for example, I get a lot of um, <clears throat> physical aches and pains. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm very sensitive from a body level. Yeah. So everything expresses itself through the body. I don't go into stories anymore. I'm very, very clear in when I see things and things happen to me. Very, very seldom do I go into stories. Okay. Like maybe once or twice a year. Yeah, yeah. And my mind doesn't go spin off. You know? Yeah, yeah. A little bit sometimes. But it's not, like I'm not perfect or anything, but I'm pretty centered. But in turn, yeah. my body takes, up, takes it all. Yeah. yeah. So I use my body to read what's going on in the collective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I explain how this works, you know, and some people are more sensitive than others. Sensitivity is not necessarily a good thing because to be sensitive, um, it's because you're disconnected from, from yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I teach is how to connect your soul to your body. And it's actually quite easy because to begin with, your ego, that mind disconnecting from emotions and feelings in the body is parallel to the soul being disconnected to your body. Okay. So if your mind is disconnected, your soul is disconnected. Yeah. Do you know, do you know anybody who's had cancer yeah. personally? Yeah. Do you know their mindset, how they're just thinking about everything else and everybody else? Yeah. And they're not thinking about themselves yeah, at all? Yeah, completely selfless, yeah. Okay. So this selflessness is absolute disconnection from their selves. That's why they get the disease. Right, okay. It's because of this huge disconnect. So it's like that kind of people pleaser mentality mm -hmm. that they, they're not caring for themselves enough that they're, that's why. Yes. Wow. Because that means their soul is so out of their self, so the more your soul is outside yourself, the more you're a magnet to all the mm, dense emotional energy of everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So you just stick in that in, stick in that in, stick in that in. Wow. Yeah. Until it turns into a tumor. Yeah. Yeah. So cancer is just a sign of disconnect. Interesting. Really interesting. Hmm. So the, the key is to learn what the um, how we got disconnected, which has to do everything with it has to do with the inner baby. Yeah. And the basic needs that the baby was not attended. Okay. Wow, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and simple. Really? Yeah. Wow. So everybody has basic needs that were not unattended. Physiological, uh, nutritional, and security needs. Okay. And um, those needs are related to the fears of the ego and to hormones that every single animal group has, but I explain more of that in the, in the course. And we all have, we, our mothers were all bad mothers because they were in turn not properly attended. Okay. So okay. it's been passed down. Exactly. Right. And the same kind of attention that your mom lacked, she's going to pass it on to you mm -hmm. because she didn't learn. She didn't, unless she learned to connect herself okay. and her in between, she's going to do the same thing to you. Yeah. And that is in direct proportion to the grief in the family. Yeah. yeah. So the more horrible stories the family has, the more disconnect the mothers are, and hence the babies. I see. 
because to be able to connect a baby's soul to his body, you need two years of 100% attention on that baby. Yeah. And calling his name and being there for him and reading him physically, telepathically, knowing what he wants, knowing what he needs, giving it to him, singing him his song, paying attention when he needs to, and then gradually turning that around and, you know, when the two years come, making him uh, connect with his family. Okay. And this is what happens. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, when I was brought up, when I was a baby, my mom did, read Dr. Spock's book. And basically, Dr. Spock said things like, you know, don't pay attention to the baby. Get the baby to adapt to your rhythm, to whatever you want. You know, if the baby cries, just leave him crying. Yeah. He'll develop lungs. He'll be stronger that way. Yeah. Yeah. And the trauma that for a baby is not to get breastfed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some moms can't even do that. Yeah. Depending on what was passed on to them, obviously. That was interesting. So those first two years are very, very crucial. Yeah. So if something happens, for example, in the first six months, that can still impact later in life. Totally. Everything that happens at the age of uh, during those two years is conditioned by everything that happened to the family mm -hmm. or previous lives because y they have to coincide. If you believe in previous lives, it's the same thing. Yeah. So depending on the traumas of that family, the mother's going to not connect with the baby. So that's how she imprints on the baby in, the, in, the, in those first two years. The way she takes care of him, she imprints the family's history on him. Wow. Wow. And those patterns are the patterns you repeat for the rest of your life. And every problem you have goes down to those patterns. So with siblings, would it be the same patterns or different? Because they've got different needs, it would be different for each. It could be slightly different, yeah. yeah. It could be some things that are similar, other things different. Okay. Yeah. If there's twins... Usually they split up, and, and it varies on the, also on the amount of attention that one gets or the other. And so there's, there's differences. that you, In astrology, twins are considered like to split the chart in half. Yeah. So one plays out one half of the chart, the other one plays out the other half of the chart, okay. for example. And siblings, yeah, I mean, I have two brothers, and they're very different. There are some similarities, but you can, they are... In essence, very different. Yeah. But I can see the family stories passed on. Yeah. Even though, for example, my youngest brother, he lives it more through my his my grandfather's point of view. Okay. He was born on the same day. Wow. So he, every pattern he has has a lot to do with my grandfather. Okay. And I'm more my mother and grandmother especially. Okay. So is that typical though for you know for you to follow your mother and your grandmother and, and for the your brother to follow your dad and your granddad it, because of the sex is that typical or not really? Um, not necessarily. No. What I've seen is that like it's especially um, the mother passes down. Yeah. But then the mother gets together with a father who has a similar family tree. Okay. Because you have to resonate to get together. Okay. So you can you you inherit the stories, yeah. And then the way you face the stories is just a variation over the same theme. Okay. So say you have a family that lost everything in the war, and that was like totally you know freaked out because of it. Then you will have other generations that will either lose everything, and other generations that will be so rich because they're obsessed. Yeah. Of not losing. I see. Yeah. So it could go either way. Okay. And then maybe the mother could have one of her stories, the father the other stories, and they get together. But it's the same, in essence, it's the same pattern. Yeah, it's the same thought. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So what happens with um, with the children when they when they're very uh, young, um, when they're just when they're babies and they are they are not attended like in in this way. So if mom is um, very lost in her thoughts, very much in her mind. Um, keeping, so England, for example, the entire country 
tends to have this pattern very disconnected, very much in their mind, very disconnected from their body. Okay. So obviously, it, individually, there's all sorts of variations. Yeah. But like in general, the country is more resonates more with abandonment yeah. than the other disconnect. Is that the, the, the geographic of it being sort of an island on its own? Is that is it to do with that? Or something? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. And um, so when somebody resonates with abandonment, their their the fragmentation of the soul by ab- abandonment. It, these it's children who just as they were born, they were never really connected to their body. Mm-hmm. So these people stay true to their ancestors and their ancestors' history. So it's the typical thing that you find like every single man at the age of fifty dies of a heart attack. You know, family stories that you can especially see through illnesses so that yeah. just repeat themselves yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. the same generation after generation that's when the disconnect is huge so when people say oh we have a um predisposition to this illness in our family and you know it's passed down and everyone's got it well yeah. it doesn't have to be that way no. okay but it really feels good to belong yeah yeah. Ego loves belonging. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, this is the essence of the yeah. Smith family. We all die of heart attacks at 50. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. <laughs> no, humans, from from in, uh, from this from their ignorance, um, they, the sense of belonging comes from codependency to their ancestors. Okay. Okay. There, there are alternatives. Yeah. So we can be free from that and just, you know, benefit from their wisdom and not from their their illness and their grief, which is the way we're supposed to go now. Right. Okay. So that total disconnect comes from not from mom not being able to attend properly the baby's physiological needs, which is basically food, drink, um, going to the bathroom, going to the toilet. Um, Cold, warm, breathing, mm-hmm. rhythms, being tired. So what happens nowadays, for example, if you see people that they don't drink or they never drink water yeah, or they only remember like once a day or I know people that only drink alcohol, mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> yeah. weird. Because we need the water element. And um, they're just not aware of the thirst. I even know people that don't know how to distinguish hunger from thirst. Mm -hmm. So there's people that think they're thirsty, so think they're hungry when they're thirsty. Yeah, yeah. So that's how screwed up we can be. Or they don't go to the toilet. They just, uh, like, they're in conversations. Oh, I won't interrupt. I'll keep on doing the conversation until... Two yeah. hours later, I go to the toilet. So, if you see this in you, if you see yeah. the signs of um, not acknowledging your physiological needs, you have this disconnect. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you said one of them. <laughs> yeah. So, it's very important <laughs> yeah. to acknowledge it and start respecting it. Yeah. And say, okay, i got to go to the toilet. I'm going to go. I'm not going to wait. Mm-hmm. It was that one. Obviously, <laughs> because otherwise you would have said which one it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it would have been any other one, you would have said drink, food. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that one. Yeah. So, um, and also if you if you dive deeper into it, you can see like um, the relationships um, that that creates. You know, for example, if if somebody doesn't drink or doesn't acknowledge thirst or um, anything that has to do with liquids. Liquids are emotions. Okay. So it, that's the relationship you're having with emotions. It's like, I, if you don't drink at all, then it's like, I don't want to feel anything. Mm-hmm. If you drink in sips, it's because you want to like filter the amount of emotions that you take in because you're taking in too much, for example. Okay. If you want to control what you drink... Some people will say, okay, I have to drink two liters of water a day because this is what the doctor said, so I'm going to make myself do it. And then what you're doing is you're controlling your emotional system. You're controlling your emotions. Right, okay. So you're not feeling it, you're controlling it. Exactly. So you can, 
you can see how all this starts conditioning everything you do in life. And it conditions every relationship you have in life and all the patterns you live with it, live out in relationships. Okay. For example, with the connection needs, it's very easy to see. So if if mom is too busy doing things, or if she just doesn't, or no, this is a good one. So imagine uh, mom is overwhelmed, and baby makes her feel too many things, and she just doesn't know how to cope with it. Okay. So she freaks out. So what she does is she gets all nervous. And she goes to the doctor and says, oh, doctor, I don't understand what the baby is wrong with baby. Help me, help me. Or, or mom, mom, the baby is crying this way. What's going on? Or to her friends, or she reads the book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So she's not there with the baby. She's freaking out all the time. Yeah. Okay. And her reaction when she freaks out is starting to do things all over the place and not pay attention to the baby. So what the baby learns is there is no time for me. Okay. So guess what happens when you're an adult? You don't make any time for yourself. Exactly. Okay. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so simple. It is. Put it like that. It is. <laughs> so the thing is, instead of doing like all this complex work and really dealing with difficult issues or with things that are too emotional for you, say for example you have like this big emotional thing with your partner and... Like, it's too complicated to deal with it at that level. If you do, your ego's already on, so you can't really, you can't talk to the ego. Just say, okay, ego, let's solve this. Ego's going to, you know, ego's going to make up more problems. Yeah. What you have to do is you have to attend the baby, which is why the ego's doing that. Okay. And it's way more simple. You fix the, pa- you fix the pattern, or you, you complete, you close the circle at the most basic level. Yeah. And everything else falls into place. Wow. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and then there's, for example, the um, uh, nutritional or connection needs. When, as I, that I was saying right now. So when they're not met, not only does mom, like, like the mom doesn't have time for you, that's one of them. But another thing is that like the way we relate to people is very much conditioned by this pattern. So if... The baby, when it's little, the soul's like going into the body, going out, going in, going out. So whenever it gets scared, it hurts, or something like that happens, the soul goes out. Okay. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but when people have a car accident, they're not aware of anything. It's because the soul leaves their bodies. Okay. Like as a protection thing? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just too much. So the mind goes... Yeah. And the soul's out. Okay. Okay. So like when people have have a plane accident, they don't feel anything. No. They just yell a little bit and <laughs> dissociate. Okay. Because the, the mind protects you. Yeah, yeah. From that, so you don't feel. Okay. Okay. So, um, when when the baby has just a little baby and has uh, I don't know some some tummy problems or toothache or something hurts or something scares him a noise. Uh, so he dissociates, and he wants mommy to be there, but mommy's busy doing something else. So he's kind of lost, and he's kind of looking for mommy. So it's like, imagine, figuratively, you can see this, like the soul is looking for mommy. Yeah. And where is she? Where is she? So this, the baby's void from his soul, mm-hmm. empty. So the further mommy away, the and bigger the hole comes. And then finally when mommy comes, she gives him a little bit of attention and a lot of her issues and problems, which is why she was out there instead of with him to begin with. Okay. So when this person grows up, what do they do? Every time they relate to somebody, they're just it's normal for them to dissociate, to go out of themselves, go into the other person's mind, see what they want, try and give them what they want, for in return to get a little bit of what? Same exact thing that mommy gives you. A little bit of attention... And a lot of her problems. They're craving the love from the person, so they're losing who they are by going into that person's life. And they're sucking the other person's problems. Yeah. In, in exchange. Wow. Yeah. Thinking that that plus the relief that comes from the other person who just gave you the problems, that emotional energy, thinking that that is love. Wow. <laughs> So that's what we do, which is like, it's so messed up. 
And we call that being nice and being sensitive. Yeah, yeah. And being kind. Yeah. <laughs> that is so screwed. Yeah. So, um, and this actually, so you, this is so screwed that you get like Donald Trump. I've seen his chart. I mean, I, I just love his chart because he's such an example for everything. He's a highly sensitive person. I've heard that actually, yeah. Okay, but since he was, he's so screwed up, he acts like a jerk. Yeah. And he acts like a, like a, um, and he's mean and, and cruel to people. So high sensitivity can take you both ways. Mm-hmm. It can take you to be just suck everybody's problems up and just be in, in everybody's issues or to freak out as soon as you feel any problems and just want to eliminate anybody that shows you your own vulnerability. Yeah. So yeah. being a good person is not a good thing. Yeah. It's screwed up. It is. It's just sucking people's mm, crap in in exchange for a little bit of attention. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is very damaging for you because the more you do it, the further away you go from your heart. And the more you go away from your heart, the more you're in the mind, the more you don't know what you want, the more you doubt things in life, the yeah. more you, oh, whatever, I don't care, until you totally dissociate. And then the heart's like filled with this um, emotional, energetical gunk, which is all the problems you sucked in from everybody else, which of course resonates with your family history and your past lives. Yeah, okay. So you're filling yourself up with this and you think that that's nice. But what you're doing is you're confusing your heart and you're being totally incoherent. Mm -hmm. And then what you have to try to do is clean that heart up by starting to choose what's good for you. Okay. So, because decisions should never be taken by your mind. Oh, they shouldn't. They should be by your heart. Always. Okay. Because your heart doesn't take decisions. It knows. It feels it. Yeah. Okay. There's no doubt. Yeah. So, if you doubt something, it's because you're coming from the mind. So, your your intuition is that heartfelt rather than head felt? Of course. Okay. Another thing is, heartfelt is, I know I'm going to do this. I know this is my next step. I know what I... That's heartfelt. There's another part of intuition that's just a knowing, which is a, a, a like a mental knowing of things. Okay, what's this all about? Okay, it's this. I know. Oh, I see. Okay. It's, it's another part of intuition. Yeah. Another side of intuition. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But of course, the more in yourself, the more coherent, the more intuitive, and and the more a channel are you are to your higher self, and the more. And the closer your consciousness is to you, to your body, so it's easier to see from consciousness perspective. Okay. The more we feed into movies, yours, mine, and somebody else's, what happened to, oh, did you see Mary? She went off with the other guys. I, I couldn't believe she did that. Oh, my God, yes. Then we totally separate. The little gossip and, yeah, and the vibration of it, yeah. Yeah, feeding the movie, feeding the story takes us out of our body. Whether it's our story or somebody else's. And you can feel like the drop in energy. There's there's a part that feels like a belonging, like you have a connection. Mm-hmm. So it, there's a part that, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Feels nice to gossip. You know, it gives you like this pleasure thing. But on the other hand, the energy drops down. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that's, this is what I teach now. Wow. <laughs> It's yeah. really fascinating because some of what you said, I mean, there are tiny bits of it that I've heard, not not a lot, to be honest with you, tiny, tiny bits of it that I've heard. But what happens is I read or I listen to more and more and more, and I think, how can I do all this? Like, it's too much. I can't do it. And what if I open it all up, and then I'm completely exposed and vulnerable, and then I'm more messed up than if I hadn't started? But what you've said about the, the very basic needs and going back to pre in a child to sit in a baby that's that's fascinating that's mm-hmm. something I've never heard mm-hmm. and the fact that it's so simple within the needs that you don't have to scrutinize and analyze and sit down and say what's wrong with you and why do you feel that way and go through it all it's it's much clearer than that yeah yeah wow oh you're <laughs> so good at understanding things and analyzing yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm very I'm you as a secretary <laughs> seriously I'm in the wrong job anyway <laughs> <laughs> you're good no, I am very um, 
very visual. You know, when you were saying it, I was like, right, this is all yeah. going in. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's how simple it is. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's what I teach. It's, it's really interesting as well because I years and years ago I went to um, sort of talk therapy and I, and I had that and it, it was helpful but I was very I am very visual and I have very visual memories and they said oh this is helpful for you but it got to the point where I thought I know what she's going to tell me and I then could almost manipulate what I was telling her because I didn't want to be truthful sometimes yeah and then I thought this isn't helping me and she doesn't realise I'm doing it and then I started to think. Uh, you know, I looked more into it and I thought, maybe talk therapy in that way, it doesn't work. I don't need to sit down and go through a timeline of my history and my problems from childhood because it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That's yeah. feeding the problem. Yeah, exactly. And that's creating a greater divide. Yeah. And it's it's uh, feeding into the, the these in, empathic patterns that are actually not good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I realize things like, the more simple you see things, the clearer everything becomes. And then when I see, for example, people like that there's a discussion, uh, people starting to take care of themselves and the food they eat, right? And yeah, sure. I mean, it's important to eat healthier food. It's better to eat uh, zero flour food or you know proximity grown food than to eat stuff that's grown on the other side of the world and yeah. that has pesticides and all that stuff. Of course, it's 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 better. Um, it's more nutritious. But the main thing, the most important thing about um, this this focus on the diet is not the food itself. No. It's the focus on nurturing yourself and choosing for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So you can do the same thing eating cake. Yeah. Just one of the examples I always like to give. Okay. You know, I like to mm, screw up with people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> So, for example, one of the things I say is, if it gives you pleasure to eat cake, because since it's so important for you to choose what you really want, mm -hmm. if that gives you pleasure, eat cake. Yeah. And most of us feel pleasure eating cake. There's some people that don't like sweet things, but there's another poison that they like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very rare that you really enjoy um, eating some very processed food. Mm -hmm. It's not if you truly savor it, you're not going to like it. Yeah. Right? yeah. But anyway, even even that I would say, okay, do it. Eat it. But eat it mindfully. Mm -hmm. And eat only what you really feel like eating. So take your time. Give yourself time, remember? Take your time and eat one spoonful, a second spoonful. And if you're really mindful, by the third or fourth spoonful, you don't want any more. No. And what you have to do is you have to throw the rest into the bin. And then watch how you freak out when you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh no, but it's good, I'm throwing it away, and maybe I could have this another time. And like, so you have all these relationships with that which you projected on a huge value onto. Yeah. And then you're throwing it in, but it actually doesn't have that huge a value. Yeah. Just the bits you already took. But you're not acknowledging what you already have, and you're so you can see all these relationships that you're, you that you have yeah. with, with objects. You know, it's very very interesting. I've so done that. What you've just said, I have had that happen where I thought, oh, I don't think it tastes good. I don't like it. I'm throwing it away. And exactly what you said, where I thought, oh, I shouldn't throw it away. It was quite expensive, and and all these different things. And then I thought, well, you're not getting it out now, are you? It's it's ridiculous, but it's crazy because. The moment you throw it in, you think, yeah, I don't want it. And as soon as the lid closes, you start thinking, oh my god, what did I do? Why did I, I do that? Should I offer it to someone that you know? Yeah, should I offer it to somebody? Yeah. So the, the, it's very, very simple to see. So the key is that what you do eat, that you do like, you really have to savor it. Yeah. You really have to enjoy it and give yourself the pleasure. Okay. It doesn't matter how unhealthy they say sugar is. Yeah. Just give yourself the pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's only going to be two or three spoonfuls. Yeah, yeah. And don't get it to anybody, don't throw it away, don't put it in the fridge. Because if you don't throw it in the bin, what you're saying to yourself is that you are the bin. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So, you want to throw it into the bin. Yeah. Because whatever's not good for you, at that exact moment, goes to the bin. Yeah. So, first, we have to do this exercise. In the future, once you've healed this disconnect, then you can do whatever you want. You can 
not eat it if you don't want to. You can put it in the fridge, give it to somebody else. But to begin with, until you're connected, you have to throw it in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing, honestly. Really, really amazing. So it's how to heal yourself and how to become more you. Um, it just goes in circles. Mm -hmm. Just releasing, um, just connecting with yourself, also releasing cellular memories, learning to read the dynamic of change and changing more fluidly, learning to understand what emotions are signaling, like using anger and hate to your benefit, using sadness and loneliness to your benefit. Okay. People just freak out and don't want it. They're tools. Yeah. They're useful. They're signaling things. And they're attaching to them as well too mm. much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's basically the course. And then I also teach you how to understand how the mind works, of course, emotions egos patterns and we see lots of patterns mm -hmm. individual specific patterns but we always work on as i said before on very simple things yeah like what interests me is like oh my god i want to send a message for the phone it doesn't work that's interesting mm -hmm. you see a lot of patterns there okay i'm not interesting in what happened with your you know the the discussion you had with your mother with your uh, spouse i'm not yeah, interested yeah. in that I'm not interested in the challenge you're having with your children, because that's too in, too personal. Yeah. And the key is to train the, your 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 awareness to use it from an impersonal point of view. Mm -hmm. To look at the bigger idea rather than the smaller detail of it. Yeah, and the filter. And thing. once you you're trained, you train yourself to start seeing things from the conscious point of view, then it's easier to deal with the big things. Okay. But you can't start off with big things. So whenever somebody has an argument with their partner or whatever, I go, cool, have an argument. You know, there's a good thing there happening. I can always see what's good under an argument or under any issue you have with your partner, for yeah. example. You know? And then train yourself with simple things. Yeah. So you're going right to the root to fix that, which will then filter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically the the chat. Okay. Mm, and oh yeah, and also we also in the course also talk about how relationships from the higher self, how how they work. Okay. Well, relationships with yourself or with others. With or everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything and how how because from from instead of relating from ego when you relate from self, it's a different dynamic. It's you understand why things happen. So you allow it to happen, and you just flow with it, and you read, you read it, and you use it instead of resisting it and saying, oh, no, I don't And you stop controlling it, you let it go. Mm -hmm. So everything's easier. So when you were saying at the beginning about the different needs that we had, so you said about the, the physical need. So Physiological? Yeah, so how many different needs are there? Three. Three. Remember Maslow's Pyramid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Security? Yeah. Physiological, security, and connection. Okay. Those are the three basic needs. Yeah. It's interesting you say that. Cause that was always the most interesting part that I learned when I did business studies, and I loved that bit. <laughs> Me too. I learned it when I was in um, in my university, in the second year of university, and when, when they told me that, it just totally struck and fascinated me. Me too. And it was like, for me, it was such a deep knowledge, and I never forgot about it. But then when I discovered this, it's like, oh my god, a totally new level of that pyramid. Yeah, yeah. That was there all the time. It was so basic. I'm sure Maslow didn't think about it. No. But it was there. It's like, oh my god. It's interesting you say it though, because in the last, I said this year, I really started to think about things. And within the last six months, I actually looked it up. So I was like, what was it again? And when you said it, I was like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, our intuition and, and, we are all connected to our higher self in, in one degree or another. Yeah. What we have to learn to do is to recognize when we are. Yeah. So we operate more from that than from the ego perspective. And all that we operate from the ego perspective, it's so that ego matures, that baby matures. And the yeah. baby matures in two ways. One, feeding it or giving it, you know, covering its needs. 
And the other way, having experiences. Yeah. And when you do that, then you become a, a vehicle for whatever has to come through you. Okay. So how, so with the course, what, how does it, how do you do it then? Do you do it, do you break it down into... Yeah, I mean, I have the theme in my mind, so okay. there's like subjects yeah. to, be, to be treated. And then it's just, it just flows a bit from one class to another. Um, for example, in, in the Spanish course that I have now, uh, I was going to do cellular memories. And uh, instead, it's still like the last, the previous class, the practical part, just occupy the whole class. So I just introduce the cellular memories in between mm -hmm. and then continue it in the next one. So yeah. I have the theme in my mind, but it just flows according to whatever subjects are coming up. Okay, yeah. yeah. And normally it's anywhere between, depending on the amount of people, between six and eight classes. Okay. Because it's gotten shorter and shorter. It was yeah. Keep it simpler and simpler. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you're going to be able to do it in 10 minutes soon. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the essence is, I just told you the essence of it. I mean, there's more details, but yeah, of course. course. And you got it. You know, it's like, <laughs> it, it's simple because it's very intuitive. It's, yeah. You know this. Yeah. I'm not telling you something you don't know. I'm telling you, you how it is like when you, when you connect with what you really know. Yeah. And it just changes everything. I think, in, I don't know if this is wrong or not, but I think in my mind, I feel like there's different levels of consciousness in a way, in the sense that there are people that are doing things, they have no idea what they're doing and the impact that they have on people and, and they're just completely oblivious. And then there are people that are conscious that they're doing something and they know that they don't want to do it and it's not good and they are judging themselves and they're aware it's wrong, but they can't, they don't have to change it. And then I think there's then the, the sort of the other level where you're not judging, you're just you're in alignment. And I feel like I'm kind of in the middle, kind of getting mm -hmm. to the other part, but I just I'm still judging too much. Mm -hmm. I'm still I'm very analytical, and that's yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. hard part. Yeah, 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 yeah. The um the analytical and the judging go together. Obviously, it has a lot to do with um your ba basic uh, connection and nurturing needs not being um, met when yeah. you were a child. So attending those help. And then there's also an issue of, um, it has to do with repeating patterns and hatred. Yeah. Okay. So the more you repeat stuff, the denser the energy becomes. The more dense the energy is, the less you can be you. Mm -hmm. So you feel trapped and you feel there's no space for you to be you. Yeah. So that usually is projected outside, but there's a limit to that projection. Okay. You see... Trump. Trump is full of hatred inside, and so he's obsessed with by pu uh, he all he wants to do is push people away. Yeah. But the more he does that, the m the, the more he is trapped in his own little circle, mm -hmm. and the less he'll be himself. In the end, he, that's going to explode on him, either with a heart attack or, you know, with an impeachment or something. But that's going to explode on him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it has a lot to do with repetition of patterns and hate. Mm -hmm. So the key here is to um, recognize hatred when you see it outside or inside you. So, for example, you say, no, no, I love everybody. Okay, then who are you seeing in front of you that hates people and gets on your nerves? Or who is coming to you saying that they hate you? Yeah. So where are you encountering hate, hatred? Mm -hmm. That's going to give you the keys of what's not allowing you to be you. Okay. So say, you know, it's my boss is always um, talking with hate about everybody, for example. Yeah. Well, there's a message there for you. You know, how does he speak? What things does he say? What does he talk about? Like, those are the things that are too, those patterns are too old for you. And your body's saying, jump a timeline, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. change the pattern be you be more you yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> so do you bring I know you said that you do your astrological work as well do you bring that into it or is it very separate no I do um, there is one part of the course where I like to use the north nodes astrologically I mean I like to know the person's moon and stuff like I like to know the charts because that always gives me even more information um so I play around with the charts, and there's one class where we do use the charts, 
Uh, so people understand relationships in a different way and uh-huh. understand the gifts that each relationship brings them. Yeah. And um, and then again, everything I think is astrological. Yeah. So my mind works with the astrological archetypes. I see life through the archi- ar- astrological archetypes. Yeah. It's not separate. I am working on bringing it even more together so I can teach people this and astrology at the same time. Okay. So I'm still sort of in baby steps developing that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like hatred is cancer. Mm. So normally, for example, the sign of cancer...